Hello everyone, I am Monica Bhushan and today we are starting lecture number 17 of Linear Algebra. Since last two classes we are studying eigenvalues and eigenvectors and last class we found the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix where the characteristic equation had distinct roots. Fine. In today's class we are going to again find the eigenvalue and eigenvector of a matrix but here we are going to see the example where the characteristic equation has equal roots okay so we will be seeing that how to find eigenvalue and eigenvector when the roots are equal fine so here we are seeing the example number two fine example number one we have seen in the last class in this example we are going to find the eigenvalue and eigenvector of this matrix okay we have discussed already that there are four steps to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors find the the very first step is what find the characteristic equation of the given matrix fine and that was your a minus lambda i equals zero fine second step to find the value of lambda right and this lambda is only the eigenvalue fine okay so third step is what we have to form the system of equation and then the final and the last step is what we have to find the eigenvector okay fine so these four steps we have elaborated in last class so in today's class we are just going to see the process okay so here what we are going to see the very first step is what this is the characteristic equation of given matrix a okay so characteristic equation is what we are going to subtract lambda in the diagonal position fine why we are not writing minus 2 minus lambda or 2 minus lambda in these places we have discussed in last class. So I will suggest you to go through the previous video. Then only you come to this video. We will understand better. Okay. So now the first step is done. What we are writing down? We are expanding and then we are getting this equation. Right now. So the characteristic equation we have expanded. And then we have got this equation. So this is my first step. Now my second step is what? I have to find the value of lambda. Okay. So how to find the value of lambda? I have to find the roots of this equation. Fine. No. So how many roots will be there? We can see that the highest power of this lambda is 3. That means 3 roots are going to come. Okay. So we have to get the roots. But we can see that the factorization is not easier on this equation. So we will be using synthetic division to get the roots of this equation. Okay, fine. So we have covered synthetic division also. So if you are not very much sure about this method, you can see the video of synthetic division where we have found the roots of equation by synthetic division. Okay, so what is the very first step in synthetic division? We first try to get one root by inspection method. Fine. No. And, and what is this inspection method? We will try to substitute the value of lambda as 1 or minus 1 or 2 or minus 2 so that this left hand side will also become 0. Right. So if this left hand side will become 0, that means that particular value is for sure one root of this given equation. Okay. So first we will try to substitute lambda as 1 and then we will see whether this left hand side has come 0 or not. Okay, so if I am substituting lambda as 1, so it will become what? It will become 1 minus 12 plus 36 minus 32. And for sure this is not 0. Fine. That means 1 is not a root of this equation. We will try with minus 1. Okay, so then what will happen? This minus 1 cube will give you what? Minus 1. Then it will be your plus 1 and then minus 12. So it will be your minus 12 right and then plus third no then it will be your minus 36 fine no? because lambda is minus 1 so minus 36 then minus 32 again this is not going to give you 0 that means minus 1 is also not the root of this given equation okay then we will try with 2 okay so if i am going to put lambda as 2 then what will happen then it will be 2 cube fine no that means 8 then minus 12 into 4 that means 48 then plus 2 into 36 that means 72 and then minus 32 this is your 80 and this is again this is 80 fine so this is 0 okay one root we have got by inspection method and that root is 2 okay fine and in the synthetic division the next step is what this root whatever we have got using inspection method we are going to write here okay 
and then we are going to only write the coefficient of each and every term of given equation so coefficient of lambda cube is what this is one coefficient of lambda square is minus 12 coefficient of lambda is 36 next is minus 32 okay also you can see that video and then you will understand that how exactly we perform the synthetic division okay so here it is written and then what we are going to write here either we will be writing zero here or we'll just put one bar and then we will drop down this one here then two into one will give you plus two then you are going to add minus 12 plus 2 it will give you minus 10 then 2 into minus 10 will give you minus 20 then you will add 36 and minus 20 you will get 16 then you are going to multiply 2 and 16 it is going to give you plus 32 and then minus 32 plus 32 will give you 0 okay that means the remainder is 0 fine so the next step is what one root already we have got that root is what lambda equals to the next step is what we are going to build the equation where the highest power of lambda will be 2 1 less than 3 so that means what this will be 1 into 1 into lambda square then minus 10 right minus 10 into lambda okay. and then plus 16 into lambda to the power 0 that means 1 okay that means it is lambda square minus 10 lambda plus 16 equals 0 okay fine so the same thing we have written here this is lambda square minus 10 lambda plus 16 equals 0 okay and then you can get the roots here easily this is by factorization method you will come to know that this is nothing but lambda minus 2 into lambda minus 8 equals 0 fine no because 16 so 2 into 8 okay so that means two roots we have got they are 2 and 8 and one root already we had got that was your lambda equals 2 so we have total three roots and the roots are 2, 2 and 8. Okay. And we know that this lambda is only called the eigenvalues. So till here what we have done. We have got eigenvalues. Fine. And then we came to know that the lambda has two same values. Okay. That means the characteristic equation has equal roots. Right. And that equal root is what? 2. So it has 2, 2 and 8. Three roots are there where two roots are common. Okay. So what is the third step? Third step is we are going to build the system of equation. We know that how to build the system of equation. Fine, no. So this was your characteristic equation. This first column is with respect to x variable. This, the second column is with respect to y variable. The third column is with respect to z variable. Fine. So first equation we are going to write as 6 minus lambda x minus 2y plus 2z equals 0. Fine. The second equation will be what minus 2 into x plus 3 minus lambda into y minus z equals 0. Similarly, the third equation also we can build. Fine. Now I have to find the eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues. Fine. No. So we have different cases. The very first case is what I am going to put the value of lambda as 2. Right. So if I am going to substitute the value of lambda as 2 in these equations, that means instead of lambda, I am going to write 2, right? I am going to write 2 in these three equations. So what I will get? 6 minus 2 is what? 4. So 4x minus 2y plus 2z equals 0. Second equation will be what? Minus 2x plus 3 minus 2 is what? 1. That means plus y minus z equals 0. Fine. Third equation is 2x minus y plus 1z that means plus z equals 0. Okay. Now, so this is the note point that whenever you are going to deal with characteristic equation have the equal roots, then you are going to get the same equation. If you will see properly here, okay, then you will find that all three equations are actually same, right? This is what you can say that this is 2, 2x minus y plus z equals 0 right now you can write here 2x minus y plus z equals 0 because right hand side it is 0 so you are going to divide 0 in the left hand side also and the right hand side also similarly the second equation you can see that this is what if you are going to divide by minus 1 left hand side right hand side both then what you will get you are going to get you are going to get 2x minus y plus z equals 0 both equations are same okay and the third equation is again 2x minus y plus z equals 0 fine so in this case how we are going to get the values of x y and z 
since to get the values of x, y and z, I need to have three different equations, right? Because three unknowns are there. So three different equations should be there. But I have only one equation. So what I have to do? We are going to choose two arbitrary variables. Okay, let k1 and k2. So this is any arbitrary variable k1. And similarly, we are going to put y equals k2. Okay, so in that case, what will be my x? x will be what? This is what 2x equals minus z plus y. So x will be what? Minus z plus y by 2. And z is what? K1. That means minus K1 plus K2. Fine. No, because y is K2 plus K2 divided by 2. So, right? So x will be what? K2 minus K1 by 2. Fine. K2 minus K1 by 2. Okay. I needed three different equations to get the values of x, y, z. But eventually I had got only one equation. Okay. So what we have to do? We are going to choose two arbitrary variables and we are going to put in case of x or y or z okay so here you can say that your eigen vector which is what in the column matrix fashion this x y z is your eigen vector you can say this is nothing but x is what minus k1 plus k2 by 2 y is your k2 fine k2 and z is your k1 so k1 this is your eigen vector Okay, so either you can leave here only in many books. They just leave here only and some other books what they do they write down in this fashion. Okay, that means what we are going to do. We are going to separate it with respect to K1 and with respect to K2. Okay, this is scaling multiple is K1 and then this is your second scaling multiple which is your K2 and then we are going to write down the coefficient of K1 from your first row what is the coefficient of k1 the coefficient of k1 is what minus 1 by 2 fine no what is the coefficient of k1 in your second row so second row you don't have k1 that means coefficient of k1 is 0 fine what is the coefficient of k1 in your in your third row this is 1 okay fine similarly what is the coefficient of k2 in your first row so k2 has 1 by 2 coefficient fine no what is the coefficient of k2 in the second row this is 1 and in the third row this is 0 fine so you can say that the two eigen vectors are minus 1 by 2 0 1 and okay and 1 by 2 1 1 by 2 1 0 when i am substituting k1 as 1 and when i am substituting k2 as 1 that means the simplest eigen vectors are minus 1 by 2 0 1 and 1 by 2 0 1 okay if you will put k1 and k2 as 2 then you will be getting it as minus 1 0 2 and then 1 2 and 0 fine okay so these two eigen vectors you have got when the lambda value was 2 and then we are going to find the eigen vector when lambda is 8 okay so when lambda is 8 the same method we are going to follow which we have followed in last class that means instead of 2 we are going to write as 8 and then we are going to build this system of equations and then finally we are going to get this as answer and how we have got this everything we have discussed in last class so in this case that means when lambda is 8 we have got the eigen vector as in column matrix form this is your 2 minus 1 1 or in your row form this will be nothing but 2 minus 1 1 fine so we have finally got three eigen vectors with respect to our lambda values 2, 2 and 8. Okay. Again, some authors just write down in terms of arbitrary variables or if you want to write with respect to the values of k1, k2, uh, 1 or something, then write down the simplest eigen vectors which are present here. Okay. And the third case is what we have discussed in the last class only. So this is the method how we find the eigen values and eigen vectors when the characteristic equation has equal roots. Fine. So if you find this class useful, please like and subscribe my channel. Thank you.